Today we're speaking with Dr. Cornelia Poliak, Associate Professor of Medicine in the Department of Medical Oncology at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and Harvard Medical School. Dr. Poliak is also an AACR board member and she joins us to speak about her breast cancer research. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome, thanks for inviting me. The abstract you are presenting at this meeting involves the clinical significance of intratumoral diversity in breast cancer. Would you discuss what you mean first by intratumoral diversity? Intratumoral diversity means that um, even at any given time of a tumor of one patient is composed of a mixture of tumor cells that have different properties, such as um, differences for genetic composition, epigenetic changes, and also um, phenotypic traits, such as the ability to invade and um, form new tumors and um, also the response to treatment. So it's basically like, um, you know, like what, we, what I will be discussing, that tumors are populations of cancer cells and we should study them as such and there is a very high degree of diversity in these populations, just like, you know, in human populations. Can you explain some of the exciting technologies that are available to analyze the molecular alterations related to tumor progression? Um, in the past uh, few years, I think probably the most exciting technology is the, this next generation sequencing um, and that's basically exploded um, and we can now sequence the whole, whole uh, genome of every uh, you know, cancer cell. So this technology allows us to, in one, you know, with this one technology, we can look at copy number alterations and also all the genetic changes that occur in a cancer cell. So that's one of the, you know, very exciting application of this uh, method. And also it allows you to look at, uh, um, when you do like so-called deep sequencing, you can actually see not only the, what are the genetic changes in the majority of the cancer cells, but also you can detect the ones that may be present in a subpopulation. So in a way you could uh, assess uh, diversity uh, using this technology. And then the other areas that um, uh, we have been also using is uh, looking at the epigenetic alterations, again applying these um, um, next generation or single molecule sequencing technologies, such as you can look at the whole um, genome for uh, DNA methylation alterations and also chromatin modification, you know, like histone modification patterns. Again, everything is um, whole genome scale and then you have this huge amount of data uh, on the tumors that we can, um, you know, link together and then uh, have this, we call it the combined molecular view of the tumor at practically single cell, single nucleotide resolution nowadays. Would you summarize what you've learned through your research about the molecular changes that occur as breast cancer progresses? Um, what we learned is that, uh, you know, this uh, um, kind of uh, accepted stepwise model of tumor progression is not really reflecting reality because it doesn't look like there is necessarily always a majority of the tumor cell populations that acquire new changes and then that's how the tumor progress. But what we're seeing in a tumors is that you have a mixture of um, cancer cell populations that have different properties and then as the tumors uh, progress, you know, from inside to invasive metastatic um, uh, stages, you can actually have a shift in these populations you know, like one becomes more dominant or sometimes some others even uh, become extinct. Uh, and also the treatment, um, you know, that the patient receives seems to influence these uh, changes in populations. And we think it's really important to understand what are these changes because, um, you know, when you're trying to treat a patient who's, uh, you know, refractory to treatment, Frequently, we just assume that the tumor remained the same, you know, like as it was uh, at diagnosis. But what we're seeing that it's actually not the case, you know, like they, they can be very different in a metastatic site. The recurrences of the treatment can be very different. So we think it's important to, to study uh, practically the, the tumor when we want to treat, you know, whether it's a recurrence or not, and don't assume that, you know, they, they remain the same as uh, they were initially. What's the next phase of research in this arena? Uh, what we're doing now is um, looking at uh, diversity of tumor cell populations in clinical trial samples. You know, like um, have the patients um, before um, treatment 
uh, then after treatment, neoadjuvant treatment or like uh, regular adjuvant treatment and also um, follow them if they have recurrences or metastatic lesions um, and, and also look at the circulating tumor cells in the, in the blood using the technology um, that has been uh, developed by like uh, Dan Haber. Uh, which allows you to look at uh, large numbers of tumor cells. So basically we want to look at uh, diversity in these uh, um, different samples from the same patient during their course of the treatment and then correlate um, the changes we see with the uh, clinical outcome of patients and then hopefully um, this can become a, a predictive or prognostic biomarker that we would see that some patient who has very high diversity to begin with should be treated more aggressively. Uh, but then we want to go beyond that. We actually want to develop ways that we can um, modulate this diversity and potentially decrease diversity by some means or um, know uh, from the diversity what kind of combination treatments we should apply to that patient. And we hope that you know, by these approaches we can, um, we can treat them more effectively. Dr. Polyak, thank you so much. Thank you.